Everything you thought you knew about moisture when it comes to natural hair is completely wrong. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why, because we're going to be debunking the most perpetuated myth and misinformation in the entire natural hair community. So stay tuned if you'd like to be enlightened in this way. Surprise, surprise, oil is indeed a moisturizer. Now I know that the natural hair community has been lying to you for the past 15 plus years, but I'm here to debunk all of those myths. Hey Z-Stars, what's good in the proverbial hood? It's your girl Zara, lovingly known of course as Epic Zara, and I'm back with another video. Now today I'm coming to you from the comfort of my living room. <laughs> do you like this setting? If you do, let me know. I know we're always in my office, my filming space, but if you like this more relaxed vibe, please drop some red emojis in the comment section down below. Anyway, that short digression aside, I'm going to be talking to you today about the difference between hydration and moisturization. It's so misinformed in the natural hair community, and this is really very basic science. So I'm going to get you up to speed and expand the horizons of your mind so that you actually understand the true role of hydration, the true role of moisture, and how to achieve both in your hair care routine. Now, of course, before we get into the video, I'm going to ask you to do the things I always ask you to do. So let's say this together. Please thumbs up so YouTube knows that you enjoy this type of content. Please share this with your friends and your loved ones, especially those of them who harbor these misconceptions about moisturization. Please comment down below. Let me know what you think the definition of moisturization is and let me know what you think the definition of hydration is. Then at the end of the video, I'm going to ask you to edit that comment and tell me the truth. And of course, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications so you know every time I post a new video. Now let's get right into this video. Now, like I said in the intro, hydration and moisturization are extremely misinformed within the natural hair community. Now to break it down very simply, hydration is water-based care and moisturization is oil-based care. Now this is contrary to what's often perpetuated inside this community because people insist that, oh, when your hair is moisturized, it has water in it. No, not necessarily. And I'm going to explain to you why. Understanding hydration for hair. Now hydration refers very strictly to the water content in the hair. Now, when it comes to hydrators, you're not simply talking about water. You're also talking about ingredients that have the ability to draw water into the hair shaft or into whatever surface they're on. So this also applies to the skin. And we call those water drawers humectants. Now, some humectants that are very frequently found within hair care and skin care include, but are not limited to, honey, glycerin, hyaluronic acid, urea, sorbitol, panthenol, and certain alpha-hydroxy acids. Now, when it comes to hydration, it's very important to balance the water content in the hair. Not only does hair being hydrated prevent breakage, it also improves the elasticity of the hair. Unlock the secret to luxurious hair with our ultimate hair growth bundle, now at 35% off. Struggling with hair that won't grow past your shoulders? Tired of lackluster locks? Whether you're dealing with a TWA, shoulder length hair, or you're at mid back length aiming for new and greater heights, our ultimate hair growth bundle is your key to transformation. Here's what makes our bundle a game changer. The Recipe Bible, crafted from years of expertise, this guide offers potent, easy to make hair care recipes that promise to revolutionize not just your hair routine, but the very nature of your hair. Witness unprecedented to thickness, shine, and length as you take control of your hair care. The holy grail of hair care products. Perfect for those who prefer ready-to-use solutions, this curated selection of top-tier products aims to streamline your routine and cut through the clutter of product overload. Personalized hair growth calendar, customized to various hair needs, including porosity and scalp conditions. This calendar removes the guesswork from your hair care, setting you up on a clear path to remarkable results. Comprehensive hair growth planner, complementing the calendar, this planner helps you document and refine your regimen, ensuring that every step you take is towards healthy 
longer hair. Oil Renaissance. Dive deep into the science and art of using hair oils. Understand why they are essential and how to use them to maximize your hair's health and growth. Our scalp compendium. Over two years in the making, this extensive guide addresses the root cause of most hair issues, the scalp. With over 160,000 words of cutting edge research and solutions, it's designed to transform your scalp health fundamentally, setting a strong foundation for hair growth. Ask now to secure the bundle at the lowest price it will ever be, complete with ongoing updates. This is a transformative investment in your hair's future. Trust in the journey as countless others have. Check out their rave reviews and see the tangible results just for yourself. Now, when it comes to moisture, we're often falsely taught that your hair is moisturized when there's water in it. But again, that is not the case. The oils and lipids that lock in water and prevent the loss of hydration from the hair and the skin are actually true moisturizers. The common rhetoric within the natural hair community is that a moisturizer is not an oil. Oil is not a moisturizer. Butters are not a moisturizer, but actually oil in and of itself is indeed a moisturizer. Now, when it comes to moisturizers, we have a few different kinds. There are occlusives, there are emollients, and there are protein rejuvenators. Now, a lot of these occlusives get a bad rap because they keep things out so effectively. But if your hair is adequately hydrated, if your skin's adequately hydrated, they also keep the hair hydrated for a very long time. Those occlusives include, but of course are not limited to, petrolatum or petroleum jelly, beeswax, mineral oil, and lanolin. Now lanolin is indeed on this list of occlusives. It's a great moisturizer, but it also has humectant properties, making it a hydrator as well. Beeswax is another one of those ingredients that has humectant properties, but is immensely occlusive. When it comes to emollients, those are your fatty acids, your oils. Of course, those include jojoba oil, almond oil, hemp seed oil, grape seed oil, olive oil, coconut oil, and many other fatty acids. Shea butter is also on that list. Mango butter, ukuba butter, and again, many, many more fatty acids. Now, the most common protein rejuvenators are elastin, keratin, and collagen. Now the hair shaft is actually comprised of lipids to a degree. I'm gonna put the percentage, the range just up on the screen now. So it's important to have these moisturizers to enhance the efficacy of your natural lipid barrier. Now there are a lot of people that will say they're simply not necessary, but it's the same concept with your skin. If you put water on it, it becomes hydrated, right? But if you don't seal in that hydration, with a barrier of moisture, your skin is going to dry out as quickly as the water entered it. <laughs> it's really important. It's the same with the hair. Now, not only do these emollients, these moisturizers keep the water in the hair, but they also make it more malleable. Again, hydration helps with the elasticity and when your hair is balanced, moisture and hydration is going to be malleable, elastic. It's going to be void of breakage. And it's going to have a really brilliant luster, a beautiful sheen or shine, depending on the nature of your hair texture. Now, when people are demonizing oils and saying that they're not essential when it comes to caring for your hair, oils and mullions, we actually need to take a look at the way the oil is composed. Now, one of the most common penetrative oils is coconut oil, which I absolutely hate. And you guys can see that coconut oil hate video right here. I still hate coconut oil. I ain't gonna like it ever. There are other penetrative oils, but I'm using this because it's probably, yeah, it's the most commonly, most widely used and the most easily obtainable. When it comes to hair that's higher in porosity, in order to actually keep the hydration in your hair, you want to make sure you're using oils that really penetrate the hair shaft and are able to help the water remain there. You also want to ensure that you're using thick occlusives to seal your hair shaft. Now, a lot of the time we think of this as sealing in moisture, but now you know it's actually sealing in hydration with moisture. Very important distinction to make because again, Vaseline is a moisturizer. 
beeswax is a moisturizer. Jojoba oil is a moisturizer. These are true moisturizers. They are void of water. Now, it is also important to highlight that there are products that have both moisturizers and hydrators as part of their formulation. So they might be able to do double duty in a sense. They're lending hydration by drawing that water from the atmosphere, but they're also keeping the water in the hair with certain occlusives and emollients. Now, before I go off on any more tangents, let's look into identifying the needs of your own individual hair based on your hair type. Now take a look at the hair that's in your hairbrush. What do you see? Can you feel the hair between your fingers? When you rub it between your fingers, is it almost as if nothing is there? Can you feel it a little bit? Does it practically scratch your finger off? <laughs> now, if you answer that, oh, I can't really feel it, then note that your hair is fine. If you answer that you can feel it a bit, but it's nothing abrasive or offensive, then your hair is normal. If you can feel it a lot, then your hair is coarse. How about your porosity? How do you determine your porosity? Now that strand test that we commonly look to is very much scientifically flawed. That's not going to determine your hair's porosity for you. What's better is, okay, shampoo your hair. Shampoo it really well and then use a basic conditioner just to get your hair back to a normal pH, right? So after you've done that, let's examine a few things. How long did it take your hair to dry with no product in it? Does your hair dry immediately? Does it take hours? Beyond that, if you twist your hair lightly, does it stay fluffy or does it constrict and tighten up on itself? If your hair stays wet for hours upon hours after shampooing and conditioning with zero product in your hair, note that you're low porosity most likely. If your hair constricts upon itself after drying, note that you're low porosity most likely. If your hair dries very quickly, you can barely keep that water in your hair and it stays super fluffy and almost like a pillow, like a cloud after a short period of time. It does not constrict upon itself, then note that your hair is likely high porosity. And if you feel like your hair doesn't really do either or it's somewhere in between, then your hair is medium porosity. Now, what does this mean when it comes to hydrating your hair? It means that you're definitely going to want to look for some penetrative oils if you have high porosity hair. Now it's already extremely difficult for the water to stay inside of the hair, right? So what do you do to remedy that? You aid it by making sure there's an oil and emollient inside the hair shaft to keep the water from escaping from the hair shaft. You also want to make sure that you're using a very rich occlusive shortly after applying your hydrators and your penetrative oil to ensure that all of that water stays inside of your hair. Of course, some of it's definitely going to evaporate, but you want to make sure that there's a good balance within the hair shaft. And that's exactly how you're going to achieve that. When it comes to low porosity hair, water can be difficult to get inside of the hair. So as opposed to seeking a penetrative oil, you're going to want to look for a very potent hydrator. Now, one of my favorite hydrating ingredients is glycerin. I love glycerin and I like to see it as the first or the second ingredient in my leave-in creams and my liquid hydrators. Now, another thing you could do as a low porosity natural or someone who struggles with hydration, try using rose water or liquid leave-in, super liquid leave-in, I mean like a spray leave-in. Also try using things like aloe vera juice or a water and glycerin mixture. These are all great for hydrating the hair and are much more effective than water alone because they continue to draw in the most minute molecules of water from the atmosphere. If you're struggling with hydration, you want something that's going to really draw in water on that kind of level. Beyond that, you probably won't need a heavy occlusive, but you will need a lightweight emollient that's still going to keep that hydration in your hair. My personal favorites are almond oil and avocado oil. I love using those on my hair just as they are. Again, to keep the hydration in my hair, but also to support the lipid content of my hair. Now, of course, when it comes to high porosity hair, you're going to definitely need to introduce those protein rejuvenators. They're also going to aid with hydration because they're going to fill in the many gaps 
that tend to be present inside of higher porosity hair. Another potent option is a bond builder. These are a bit newer in the hair care space, at least with the introduction of Olaplex, probably within the past 10 or so years, right? And those are great for actually going in and building bridges between certain molecules in the hair. Now, I'm going to actually put a brief explanation in the next screen so you guys understand how these different bond builders work. There are a few on the market. My favorite is Olaplex, and then of course there's K18, as well as a few others. We'll break them down just a little bit. And if you guys want a full video, then drop some yellow emojis in the comment section down below. So the three bond builders I'm going to show you are Olaplex, K18, and Epre. So feel free to pause so that you can read through everything. Now K18 in particular is gonna talk to y'all, but I absolutely love the science behind these tools. So enjoy. Dealing with damaged hair in the salon chair? Meet the polypeptide chain responsible for hair strength and elasticity, found at the innermost layers of all hair types, including every client in the salon. When hair is exposed to chemicals or heat, these chains break, causing permanent damage until now. K-18 bioscientists spent 10 years studying hair biology to find the ultimate reconnector for deep hair damage. This is our patented K-18 peptide. It powers K-18 repair to help support your client's hair through every service. The Pro Mist swells the cuticle for peptide penetration, restoring up to 99% elasticity pre-service. Post-service, the Pro Mask closes down the cuticle, locking in the peptide and repairing hair from damage caused during services from bleach and color, chemical services, and heat. Now you can strengthen, soften, smooth, and restore bounce in two steps, four minutes each, no extra rinse needed. Hair like new, powered by Biotech. The impact of water intake on your hair health and overall wellness now, if you actually want your hair and your skin to be hydrated from the inside out, then it's really, really, really important to drink a lot of water and to eat a very balanced diet. If you're drinking enough water, it will definitely reflect in the hydration levels of your hair and your skin. They'll just look more supple. They'll feel softer, smoother. They'll be more radiant. A lot of people take this for granted and don't take it seriously enough. Expanding upon the crucial role of water intake for hair health, it's essential to recognize that proper hydration underpins the integrity of hair, skin, and nails. Water constitutes approximately one quarter of a hair strand, making adequate hydration fundamental to preserving the hair's strength and volume. Insufficient water intake can result in slower hair growth, increased brittleness, and, in extreme cases, accelerated hair loss as the body allocates hydration to more critical functions. The body's overall health and efficient operation hinge on maintaining an optimal balance and distribution of water. While individual water needs vary with physical activity and environmental conditions, a baseline daily intake of about 1.8 liters is advisable to avert the onset of mild neuroendocrine reactions associated with dehydration. To further bolster hair health, integrating a diet rich in essential nutrients alongside consistent water consumption throughout the day ensures that both hair and scalp are adequately hydrated. The enrichment of your diet with specific fruits and vegetables known for their high water content Content and rich nutrient profiles substantially augments hair health. Watermelon, for example, approximately 92% water, not only assists in maintaining hydration, but also supplies vital vitamins A and C. 
These vitamins play crucial roles in sebum production and collagen synthesis, respectively, vital for robust hair growth. Additionally, leafy greens like spinach, broccoli, my favorite, and kale are invaluable for their high concentrations of vitamin A and C. Incorporating omega-3 fatty acids from sources such as salmon and flax seeds into your diet is equally beneficial. These nutrients help nourish the hair follicles and maintain scalp health while providing essential oils that improve hair hydration and resilience. Adopting a diet replete with these nutrient-dense foods, as well as many others, not only promotes hair hydration and health, but also stimulates growth and vitality. This comprehensive approach underscores the profound impact a balanced diet has on hair health, enhancing the efficacy of hydration efforts and ensuring the long-term well-being of your hair. Choosing the right hair care products. Now, when it comes to choosing the right hair care products, it's so important to choose them according to your scalp type and your hair type, whether that's combination oily, dry, sensitive, or a more normal scalp and hair type. Now, this is really important because you can't just choose products based on whether or not they're hydrating or they're moisturizing or they're both. You also have to make sure that if you need more hydration, it's also working well with your skin type. I wanna give you guys some quick tips when it comes to reading labels. Now, like I said earlier, sometimes products are both hydrators and moisturizers. If they contain humectants and emollients, then they're hydrating and they're moisturizing and they might be able to do that double duty. Daily hair care tips for optimal hydration and moisture. Now this works for everyone when it comes to maintaining hydrated and moisturized hair. So I'm gonna share these tips with you so that you can get on track to actually ensuring that your hydration levels are on point and your moisture levels are also on point. Please use lukewarm water to wash your hair. Now, of course, when a molecule like water is heated or when it's hot, it's more excited. It's going to pass through things more easily. So we also don't want to fry our hair with water. We're not trying to use the water to scald our hair or our skin. So I advise you to use lukewarm to warm water to wash your hair. It will allow the water to enter the hair shaft more readily, which is essentially setting you up for hydration. Now, I also recommend that you apply your moisturizers as soon as you finish washing your hair to lock in that hydration. That's super important. It's the exact same concept as doing your skincare. You're not going to like wash your face and then go away for two hours, then come back with your moisturizer. It doesn't make any sense. That's silly. <laughs> Please apply your moisturizer as soon as you finish washing and conditioning your hair. Now I advise to always use deep conditioners over rinse out conditioners. Now a lot of people will probably argue with me on this one, but if your deep conditioner is well suited to your hair type, whether that's high porosity, low porosity, fine, coarse, fine to coarse, you know, everything's a spectrum, they are going to be just fine. Now why do I advise this? Because deep conditioners are formulated to penetrate the hair shaft more readily. They're actually formulated to enter inside of the hair and offer deeper hydration and then beyond that moisturization. And because they're also formulated with certain emollients that penetrate the hair shaft and hydrators as well that penetrate the hair shaft, you're already setting your hair up for success. I use a deep conditioner every time I wash my hair. I can't shout my hair is on the lower end of the porosity spectrum. So I'm not trying to struggle. I'm not trying to suffer myself. Also manage your stress. When your cortisol levels are high, when your hormones are out of whack, your hair's composition, your body's composition is also going to be out of whack. So if you want your hair to be well hydrated and well moisturized from the inside out, then please, I urge you to manage your stress levels. Try and like read your Bible, pray, you know, meditate on the word of God, calm down a little bit. That was the way I would approach. I know not everybody harbors these beliefs but this is my own advice to you from my own personal approach. Now again, I say hydration and moisture are two separate concepts, but they work in tandem to ensure the health and the vitality of the hair and the scalp and the skin, the body as a whole. So please, I hope you learned something 
comment down below. Let me know the most interesting thing you learned watching this video. And please experiment, get to know your hair, get to know your scalp, get to know your skin so that you can give your body exactly what it needs. If you made it this far, please drop some blue emojis down below. I love you so much. I can't wait to see you in my next video. Thumbs up, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and ta-ta for now. God bless you.